Hi guys, this is Dan. Welcome to Angle Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. This is the weekly reading um, for the uh, collective. It is for all signs and it is originally created for Sunday, September 18th through Saturday, September 24th. It is a collective reading, therefore I speak in broad terms. You have to figure out where or if it fits in your life. If you are feeling on a date other than the dates that it was created for, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use it. If it fits your situation, whenever you're seeing it, by all means, feel free to utilize it. Please check out the drop-down menu underneath any of my daily videos. Then there are some housekeeping rules that I want you to think about. How to contact me via social media for a private reading. Um, uh, and ways to support the channel. Uh, easy ways to support the channel. Please hit that thumbs up button. And um, uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave me a question or comment. And share the video out. So each one of these cards is going to represent for maybe a day or two. Possibly three depending on how you're working through your week. But this is the energy that kind of underpins the cards that we'll see going forward. So let's see what's going on in the cards. All right, so for the beginning of the week, we have the Nine of Cups. We love her. She's friendly, she's happy, she's self-assured, she's emotionally, like, well set, right? She feels good. She's a compassionate, caring, open, even maybe vulnerable to a degree. Not in a sense of vulnerability that is harmful to us, but able to be, to show a deeper level of who she is, how she feels, the nurturing nature of her. That's specific to this very design within this deck because the way she's offering that rose to me, oftentimes the, the traditional Nine of Cups can seem a little bit smug, but Nines are about personal completions, feeling whole, feeling emotionally sound, Coming in off of last week's readings, I'm not surprised to see this as the underpinning energy of the beginning of this week, because last week's readings were like extremely powerful and very much about like, in my opinion, self-realization and awareness and moving ourselves forward in a way that feels very settled and sound. To me, she would indicate more of that sound settling in the sense of understanding how we feel, why we feel, embracing that, owning that, not necessarily needing to hide it, sharing that with others, with the right people, of course, right? But also having that intuition, that emotional intelligence to know who the right people are to share ourselves with, right? That's what I mean by being like open, compassionate, and vulnerable. We don't want to just let any, you know, jerk in, but to those that matter, we understand that they matter. And we understand that we can like sort of um, engage with them in a way that feels more, um, what's the word, like reciprocate, reciprocal, right? That's the kind of the vibe that I get from this. So in the beginning of the weekend, this doesn't necessarily pertain just to people. This can pertain to our job. This can pertain to our life, uh, different areas of our life. Remain open, remain like sort of sound, complete, whole in how we feel about things, positive. That would be this card here. This is the card of like, uh, you know, the work that we've done has paid off and we understand and really truly feel that payoff from within and therefore we can go out into the world in a sort of successful and emotionally sound way and interact in that way. And when we do that, we get those sort of experiences back, right? It's like we give, we get what we give. And so to me, I feel like this should be a positive beginning to the first few days of the week. We'll see how the cards roll out throughout the, the week, the, the, the dailies for the week. But to me, even if like, you know, all hell is breaking loose around us, she's not going to be rocked. That's my feeling. She's not going to sink to, you know, other people's behavior. So I'm not even concerned about that. To me, she feels very self-assured, confident, loving, and kind. Now let's look to the midweek. Oh, yay. Well, what did I say about shit going down this week? We have the Tower card. The Tower card is Major Arcana. It is oftentimes, you know, uh, looked at with fear and worry. But to me, Tower has an inevitability to it. And Tower is the thing that, in, it's like the elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about, right? It's the thing that needs to shift. It's the thing that needs to change or else, you know, we're not able to move forward. We're staying stuck, you know? The Tower is kind of like, 
uh, a situation, a relationship, uh, uh, an idea that's built on a faulty foundation that's not really serving us anymore. Oftentimes, and I, the reason why I describe this is because you guys are going to need to figure out where this tower is. If it's for you, it could be a tower that's happening around you, right? It could be uh, a loved one going through their own tower moment. And oftentimes we want to jump in and help or save them. Or we want to sink to their level of misery and kind of commiserate with them and bring our energy down. We don't have to do that, especially with the Nine of Cups in the beginning of the week. We can be kind and compassionate and maintain our own space and attention. But um, we can also allow the tower to fall. And that's where the lesson is within the tower, in my opinion, is, is that the pain that comes from the tower is in the resistance of it. When we try and hold on to something in the way or the form that it is for too long, and we create that resistance and that struggle, that's where we experience the pain. When we let the tower transform, fall apart, or change without, um, you know, resistance or the least amount of resistance possible, oftentimes we can move through the tower much more quickly with much more ease. We learn from it and then we hit that, that piece of the star card that is so lovely, right? That calm after the storm. So if something disrupts or erupts during the midweek, do not be surprised. It may not even be our thing. It could be something that's going on around us that feels outside of our control. Don't try and control it. That's the key to this. This crown here to me says there's wisdom and learning and even authority or or uh, an opportunity within this tower, but we have to understand that as it shifts, changes, morphs, falls apart, or does whatever it's going to do, there's a gift to be had here. Be flexible. Flow like that nine of cups, right? Go with the flow of what is going on around you, even if it feels like unexpected change and it's like at first um, jarring or shocking, right? That's kind of the tower. The tower can be very much shock and awe, but it doesn't necessarily have to like totally ruin our lives if we choose not to allow it to, right? If we choose to sort of flow with it rather than against it. Um, now let's look at the end of the week card. The end of the week card is the lovers. Not mad at that. Sign of Gemini. Um, oftentimes associated with a choice, right? But to me, the love kind of stays in place. We see that love definitely in the Nine of Cups. That not in love would be more self-related in the Nine of Cups. But I, for some reason, I feel like something's falling apart for somebody around us. And it's going to be hard for us to not want to get involved. That's my feeling. That's what I'm looking at this and what I'm getting from this. I don't know that this tower is us. I think this tower affects us because we may care about this person very deeply or this situation very deeply, but ultimately we are going to be okay seeing the lovers at the end of the week. There's almost like maybe through the, the, um, the discord of this tower situation, right? It actually deepens the connection either to this situation, the person or whomever, what, however we're experiencing this in a way that the lovers becomes present by week's end. Like we may understand our connection to it a little bit better. It might be a little bit more healthy. It might be a little bit more, um, like I almost get the feeling because of this nine of cups, like whatever's going on for those that we care about, if, if, if this is outside of us, for those of you who are experiencing this, like say, say this is an example, you're watching somebody you love dearly kind of fall apart. It's not for us to get in there and fix it for them, is my feeling. And when we do that, I think that at the end of the week, we understand a clearer sense of maybe who we are, who they are, and how much they mean to us. And it actually will end up strengthening the relationship or the connection rather than um, dissipating it, if that makes sense. There's a way here with the Nine of Cups to be supportive, compassionate, open, and available, but not necessarily take on their lesson for them. You never want to take away somebody's pain, if that makes sense. If you take it away from them, this is my belief, if you take it away from them or try and fix it for them, they don't ever learn the lesson. And oftentimes they end up having to repeat the tower over again. Through another experience or another situation, they find themselves in the same place six months, a year later, and they haven't learned it yet. It's kind of like, so stepping back and sometimes just holding space and attention for someone without any sort of real, um, 
I don't want to. I, I want to say emotional involvement, but I feel like there are emotions involved here, especially with the Nine of Cups and the Lovers. But the Nine of Cups would be about self emotions, right, and being solid in those as we watch the Tower fall, and then we're that much deeper in that awareness of our own power, our own love. But it's a choice that we have to make, right? That's also the lovers. We have to make that choice to maybe step back and allow this person to go through whatever it is that they need to go through. Or um, allow the connection to transform and change into something that might be a little bit, not even might, it's going to be more powerful and more solid. But right now, where it stands with the tower in the middle of the week, we're solid with that nine of cups. The other aspect or the other part of the situation, relationship, or whatever it is you're dealing with or looking at is on faulty foundations. And so prepare to watch that shift and change, but don't let that shift and change sink you. Does that make sense? Because the lovers indicates that actually it will grow you in some way, shape, or form. That's not to say that there's not a little danger involved, right? But we get to assess how much of that responsibility or discomfort do we want to take on for ourselves. And I don't believe we have to take on that much, to be honest. All right, so let's go to the shamanic medicine cards. Oh, wow. Shapeshifter perspective. This to me, just because of the red and black and that person, they feel almost trapped within that crow or that raven, right? This to me feels like this tower moment is somebody we maybe care deeply about being tossed about, being in the throes of something like that's fiery or hard for them. And then the word perspective makes me think like keeping our perspective through the nine of cups and through the lovers and maybe keeping... I don't know if it's a healthy distance or if it's a, a just a, you know, holding space for this situation or person. And also the idea of shapeshifter to me feels like we might need to shapeshift ourselves a little bit in ways that we don't normally do. Like, all right, speaking to the codependents in the room, hello, I've got my hand raised. This is about shapeshifting out of your codependent nature, out of your need to fix things for people and allowing them, making the choice to step back, loving them enough to allow them to go through their tor turmoil and holding and maintaining a different perspective as they, as you watch them maybe spin, this raven here, this crow is bringing them to law, it's bringing them to knowledge, it's bringing them to understanding, it's, it's shape-shifting them while it's shape-shifting us, if that makes sense right? We might be shape-shifting from a codependent into a more independent um, person that chooses to love from a more healthy viewpoint. Does that make sense? And in doing that, they also shape-shift through their tower moment because they have to learn the lesson or find it within themselves to move forward or to find a perspective within their, within their turmoil to shape shift out of it. Does that make sense? So I feel like that's the reading here is that we're gaining something from this depending on how we handle it. Now we'll see how the cards play out this week and see, you know, what sort of energies are taking place because that will indicate whether or not we stay in this sort of, it's like a fine line to me. The Nine of Cups is about being emotionally available, but we are our first priority. The Tower wants to come in and maybe disrupt some shit. And that may be some stuff around somebody we care deeply about. But we need to shape shift into being that sort of rock or pillar for them, but not taking on their stuff for them. Does that make sense? That's where we shape shift, and that's where the perspective we need to hold to get further along. They shape shift when they realize that, okay, I have to do this on my own, or I, I need to solve this or release myself from this on my own because this person does feel a bit trapped um I, I don't know why in my mind but i feel like they're you know some of you could be dealing with like drug addiction or something like this person feels trapped in the throes of drug addiction and it's all falling apart for them but we can't be codependent and like um fix it for them they need to go through it and in doing that in stepping back in loving them from a place of health or making the choice to not you know, fix it for them. We actually shape shift our perspective. Theirs has to shape shift in that process too. And it's not that we're causing them harm. We're actually showing them more love. I hope that makes sense, guys. I don't know if it does. Now let's go to the ground for the week.
And again, I will say this, this feels extremely fucking transformative. Excuse my language. But this week feels very transformative and it's transformative for us. My feeling is it's transformative for us, but it's, and it's profound, but it's really profound for the other party. I'm going to say that, or the situation that's this towers around this shapeshifter feels stuck. I just went to the grounding stone. I forgot to read shapeshifter, but I'm going to read it to you right now. The grounding stone for the week is trust. And what I mean, and I, I like that grounding stone because it makes us trust in ourselves in the nine of cups, trust in our emotions. It also makes us have to trust in the, in the, the process of spirit and evolution and this idea of shapeshifter and this, if this situation or this person we care about is in turmoil, we have to trust that they have a God too. They have a path. They have a lesson to be learned. They have guides. They have an evolution that they need to complete too at a soul level. And we need to allow that to take place for them. That's the biggest gift we can give them by making that choice. And that's where the connection of the lovers comes in and deepens. I'm not going to say that by the end of the week, everything's going to be all lovey-dovey and perfect. But somewhere, I get a feeling that this is a longer lasting love connection that's happening. And it's interesting to me that Adam's under the ground and we have this man trapped, right? And she's reaching out to him and we have a woman here. They're sharing the apple, but she's not digging into the ground to get him out. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, the serpent is there, which would represent the tower, but she's offering assistance from a safe distance. She's vulnerable and open like the nine of cups, but she's not digging him out. She's not running to go get a shovel, right? She is letting him find his way out of this trap. And in doing so, she's actually deepening the connection between the two of them. And I will say this, like I was on this other tangent that I was on, we're not going to end up all lovey-dovey by the end of the week, but like they might even, there might be some like frustration with the other party that like, hey, why didn't you help me in the way you normally do? Why didn't you take this problem away from me and fix it for me? But like down the line, I feel like the strength and the, the, the distance that the lovers hold within that card, it will all show itself to be true and more profound and more connected. I get the feeling later, right? So just trust that that's what's going on. Let me read you Shapeshifter. Even if this person or this situation responds sort of negatively at first because they don't understand why you're not diving into the hole with them, right? Eve's like, no, here, here's, here's an, oh, you in a hole? Here's an apple. Here, just so you don't starve. All right. Shapeshifter perspective. To understand the troubling situation in your life, see things from a totally different perspective. Shapeshifting helps you do this. By taking on the qualities of a power animal, you will see or hear what is being conveyed with clarity. Choose an animal that suits your current needs, such as a lion for strength, a dove for peace, a wolf for protection, or a raven to understand the bigger picture. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and focus on the animal's characteristics. Breathe them into your very being. As you continue, you will become one with your animal and be taken on a visual journey. At first, you may find it unsettling to feel the body and char the characteristics of the animal you have become, but do not fear. The insight and perspective of this animal will be of great benefit. A smooth transformation back into your own mind and body is assured, and understanding of how to resolve your dilemma will stay with you. I don't think this is about resolving your dilemma. I think this is about, and I don't think this is about resolving a dilemma for someone else. It's about allowing someone else to work through their dilemma and like being supportive of them from the sidelines. Shapeshifter revealed the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Iliad, Norse sagas, and Celtic legends describe the metamorphosis from a deity or human into an animal for the purpose of employing its physical or and sensory talents. This comes from a time when the relationship between animals and shamans was intrinsic to life. Modern examples of shapeshifting can be found in the X-Men, Twilight, and Harry Potter. Other divinatory meanings. Listen to and observe your thoughts carefully. List all the positive attributes about yourself and the world around you. Change negative words to positive ones. Be free with your compliments, gratitude, and praise. That's for handing out the roses in the Nine of Cups, guys. What you deem as right may not be so for another. And that's the perspective shift of Shapeshifter, right? How we think they should handle something. We may not, we may need to keep our, like, not keep our mouths shut, but not step in and try and fix it for them. Shapeshifter, whichever form you choose to take, bear, butterfly, wolf, or snake, the medicine will speak to you of what it is you now must do. I think this is about maintaining our own emotional strength 
and our connection to another party or situation without allowing that situation to like, I don't want to say destroy us, but to suck us in or bring us down. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense, guys. That is your forecast. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.